All right. I'd like to, our, our agenda for today is uh, a few brief preliminaries. We'll have a welcome and a land acknowledgement, and uh, then we'll turn it over to Peter for his presentation, and we should have some time for some Q&A at the end. Uh, we plan to wrap up by one o'clock. Uh, today, you might know, is World Water Day, and so in uh, celebration of that, we have this uh, photo here from some of you who were with us here a couple of years ago on the banks of Mississippi as we uh, stood up for water and protected Line 3, and so I'd like to offer this land acknowledgement. Wherever you may be, let's acknowledge that we are all on indigenous land. Minnesota is located on the traditional and contemporary homelands of the Anishinaabe and Dakota peoples, the original stewards of this territory. We also acknowledge the trauma that's deeply embedded in the foundation of this country. The land we reside on came under control of the U.S. through genocide, slavery, and ongoing occupation. We recognize the historical, spiritual, and personal trauma that has impacted indigenous communities, communities of color, and immigrant communities, and, and really all of us. By offering this acknowledgement of trauma, we affirm the right of everyone here to bring their whole selves and stories into this space, and we affirm our intention to promote healing, respect, and love. I just want to point out that our organization is doing uh, what it can and making efforts to make that not just a uh, set of words that we say, but actually actions that we live out. And uh, as many of you know, we've got a legislative platform that we're pursuing that has some specific legislation uh, that we've developed this platform with Indigenous leaders. Uh, we'll have an update on that next Tuesday, April 4th, or two Tuesdays from now, April 4th, and you can sign up for that on our upcoming events page. I'll also be sending that link out in the follow-up. And also, uh, We've built a reparations learning table with guidance from our board chair, Jim Bayer Jacobs, and from uh, our staff, Jessica Intermill. And if you're interested in that, you can email Jessica at jessica at mnipl.org to find out more information and how you can participate in that. Uh, as many of you have heard, the Inflation Reduction Act is the most comprehensive response to climate change that we've had in, in legislation in our country in the history of the U.S. Um, our organization can help you in some particular ways, particularly with getting into solar energy. We've got some no-cost options for congregations and uh, some options for purchasing your solar array directly. If you're interested in that, to get started, just email me, buff at buff at mnipl.org. And then the other thing we can do is guide you to resources. Uh, we have a number of different partners that we work with. And one of our strongest partners is Clean Energy Resource Teams. They're one of the most comprehensive groups out there that offer all kinds of information. And that's the reason that today we've invited uh, Peter Lindstrom from CERTS to join us. Uh, Clean Energy Resource Teams connects individuals and communities in Minnesota to the resources they need to identify and implement community-based clean energy projects. So they don't just work just with congregations, they work with all kinds of entities all across the state. They really are truly statewide. They have great technical assistance and they've got some financial assistance as well. Uh, Peter has been a big help uh, to me personally and some work that I've been doing with a community uh, group in my area, Stillwater, he uh, was instrumental in helping us convince our school system to uh, pursue solar arrays for uh, a couple of our schools out here and did a great job of giving us the information we needed as a community to, to get on board and pursue that. So I strongly encourage you at whatever level you're organizing in your community to work on climate action, uh, contact CERTS. They're a great, great program, and I, I think you'll see that in the presentation coming up. So I'll turn it over to you, Peter. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Buff. And I'm glad this is being recorded because I'm glad we have that on tape that uh, 
uh, that uh, great testimony you just provided for certs. We definitely appreciate that. Uh, and I will say that Minnesota Interfaith Power and Light is uh, just an outstanding organization. I have a deep amount of respect for Buff and the, and the team at MNIPL. I am going to share my screen. So uh, Buff, give me a thumbs up if you can see that. Fantastic. All right, good. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I am Peter Lindstrom with the Clean Energy Resource Teams. And Buff is absolutely, as usual, 110% correct in that the Inflation Reduction Act is the largest investment to address climate change in United States history, and it's not even close. Here's the headline takeaway for the IRA for this presentation today. The law is projected to reduce 2030 U.S. greenhouse gas emissions to 40% below 2005 levels. So by 2030, a 40% reduction anticipated uh, in GHG, uh, greenhouse gas, GHG emissions, 40% um, below 2005 levels. This is an absolute game changer. This is uh, uh, a landmark federal law uh, that aims to cut inflation by, number one, reducing the deficit, number two, lowering prescription drug prices, and number three, investing in domestic energy production and promoting clean energy. It passed by Congress and, and was signed by President Biden just last, uh, last summer, August 2022. The law itself will raise over $700 billion and authorize nearly $400 billion in spending on energy, clean energy, and climate-related initiatives, more than $200 billion in deficit reduction, three years worth of Affordable Care Act funding, uh, uh, prescription drug reform, and much, much more. Buff did a, a great job explaining, um, uh, providing the overview on, on certs, so I won't spend too much time on this. I'll only say that we're a bit of a goofy organization in that we're not a for-profit entity. We're not selling anything. We're not exactly a, a nonprofit either. We are what's called a partnership organization. And we have four partners. Uh, one is a regional development commission down in the Southeast part of the state. Uh, we have uh, uh, another partner that's the Great Plains Institute, a nonprofit in the Twin Cities that focuses on energy issues. Our third partner is the state of Minnesota. We work very closely with the Department of Commerce uh, that uh, has the energy programming for the state. And our fourth and final partner is the University of Minnesota. That's typically where I would be um, officed. And so Buff is absolutely right. We're all about uh, helping communities do clean energy projects. Communities broadly defined could be faith faith based communities, could be farmers, uh, businesses, cities, counties, schools, anybody that's interested in being more energy efficient or utilizing clean energy. Uh, we're, we are here to help them, guide them along the way. And Buff mentioned that uh, uh, we from time to time provide some financial assistance for these projects. So I wanted to plant that in your ear too. Uh, we provide what are called seed grants. So if your congregation is thinking about a clean energy project or an energy efficiency project and could use a, 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 a small amount of funds to help you along the way, uh, these seed grants, which we will be opening up another round this summer, are about two to five thousand dollars, give or take. 
um, and uh, encourage you to, to think about that. All right. So I'm going to dive into these broad topics, provide a, a, a little bit more on the IRA itself, um, dive into uh, what's called direct pay, um, touch on electric vehicles, and, and this uh, uh, this um, uh, this tax section, which sounds super boring, 179D, but is relevant to faith-based communities, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, I want to touch on PACE financing, Property Assessed Clean Energy Financing, a way to get these projects over the finish line. Uh, and then, um, so these, these first few things I'm talking about primarily relate to your facilities, um, but then I also want to touch on the folks, uh, the impact of the IRA to the folks that may be attending your your uh, your congregation, and and touch on um, how the IRA uh, is really a game changer when it comes to residential efficiency and renewable energy projects as well. So, I will say, as I mentioned, this law just passed in August. 2022, and uh, there's a lot that that is still being worked uh, worked out with the IRA. There's some things that I may not know. Uh, this this is a 750 page bill, lots of uh, details. There may th may be things I don't know, or there may be things that collectively we don't know yet because the guidance uh, has not been released from the um, the IRS. So um, with that caveat, we can dive in about the IRA, a little bit of a, a broad overview on the IRA itself. Really at the, at the heart of the Inflation Reduction Act is a 369 billion package of investments. Again, this is the most significant uh, package of investments in the in the history of uh, our clean energy transition. There, there are something like two dozen ta uh, tax provisions with the aim of accelerating the deployment of clean energy, clean vehicles, clean buildings, clean manufacturing, and more. And many of these two dozen or more tax provisions offer bonus credits for projects that are located in energy communities. And I'll define that in a minute. Uh, pay prevailing wages and use apprentices and or meet certain domestic content provisions, meaning made in America. Get this, the Clean Energy, the American Clean Energy Association and National Trade Associations uh, projects that the IRA will result in the deployment of 550 gigawatts of clean energy, gigawatts, in the next decade. This will come from solar, this will come from wind, uh, combined heat and power projects, hydrogen fuel cells, and, and more. It's an exciting time to be in the clean energy business. There's no doubt about that. So just a little bit more on the overview, a few, uh, just a, a sample of some of the new programs uh, that have been funded. It, it, it is a dizzying array of new and expanded programs that range from investing in early stage R&D technologies all the way through consumer deployment, things that you can buy at Home Depot today. Let me just give you one example. Uh, in the middle of this list is the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund, $27 billion. This $27 billion will help capitalize green banks 
across the nation. So uh, um, uh, it'll help um, uh, finance these green banks that'll um, in turn leverage private capital for, for clean energy uh, projects to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and, and, uh, and really have an aim again towards benefiting uh, low-income communities. And in fact, there's a bill that I'm sure the um, MNIPL is tracking that'll, that creates a green bank in Minnesota. It's moving through the legislature now called the Minnesota Climate Innovation Finance Authority. So we have our fingers crossed on that one. I want to start off by uh, taking a step back from the IRA and just say I've really been impressed with uh, this um, document uh, and all of the, the information that can be found on Energy Star. It's a Department of Energy, U.S. Department of Energy website, and they have a specific workbook for congregations uh, that provides a real step-by-step -step guidance for congregations, for faith-based communities that are interested in being more energy efficient and using renewables. You can find it online and download it today. I also want to start off by saying, you know, for the clean energy resource teams, Oftentimes, no matter who's calling us on the phone or sending us an email, our first words of advice are get an energy audit uh, and understand, really get a, a solid understanding of your energy usage. Um, benchmark your energy usage, and you can do that through Energy Star. So you know uh, month after month, year after year, how much energy you're congregation is utilizing, uh, and then get an energy audit um, to, uh, to see where you can find some savings. And there is one, uh, number three here, uh, that the, another frequently asked question is, okay, well, that's great. Where do we get an energy audit? Um, oftentimes your utility provides that service. But I also wanted to point out number three on this list here, Interchange, which specializes in providing energy audits for nonprofits. Um, and, uh, uh, and I believe it's free of charge. Um, so yeah, two thumbs up from Buff on, on that one. All right, uh, let's uh, start getting into the, into the IRA. Um, talking about uh, solar first, first off for, um, for, uh, well, I'll say that um, the primary tool, the primary tax credit for residential and for commercial entities that do a solar project it's called the investment tax credit, the ITC, the investment tax credit. And this tax credit was, it was a few years ago, 30%, nice healthy tax credit, but it was on its way down. It was stepping down year after year. Uh, last year it was at 26%. Um, it was gonna, gonna go to 22% and then all the way down to 10% in a few years. The IRA, invest, uh, the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, put the brakes on that and in fact boosted it back up to 30%, minimum, 30% minimum for, for projects that are one megawatt or smaller, 30% uh, minimum tax credit. Another uh, interesting thing um, for the commercial side of things is that it makes these tax credits transferable. So if you're a business out there and you uh, don't have a tax appetite or you just need the cash, you can sell these tax credits to another 
organization that has a tax appetite. So you can sell it um, uh, maybe for 90 cents on the dollar. The, uh, the, the organization you sell it to gets the full $1 tax credit. Um, and the organization, the business that's doing the selling gets the 90 cents that they can use for whatever they whatever they want. This is brand spanking new. And this, this uh, transferability of tax credits um, is a big deal in the solar world. I'll also add, and I'll, this will all tie back to congregations here in a minute. So I mentioned that the 30, the tax credit is 30%. And that's a minimum. Thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act, there has been adders uh, for tax credit adders. So if uh, it is um, uh, made in America. The the products, the 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 steel, the um, components to the solar array are made in America. That thirty percent goes to forty percent tax credit. If it is that a solar array is located in a quote unquote energy community. And the definition here is uh, it could be a brownfield site. Um, it could be a, like a closed landfill. It could be a community that is heavily dependent on fossil fuel, on the, on the fossil fuel industry. So think about like Becker, Minnesota with the coal plant that's closing there, heavily dependent on the fossil fuel industry. If the solar array is located there on a church uh, or otherwise, 10% um, adder to the tax credit. If it is located in a low income community, uh, additional 10% um, adder, additional 10% credit. If it's a solar array that is uh, part of an affordable housing project, a low and moderate income housing project, or benefits low and moderate income households, 20% adder. And these are all stackable. So again, 30% minimum, but if it's made, you're using Made in America and you're putting uh, the um, uh, the array, uh, say it's a community solar garden on a brownfield site that benefits that community solar garden is really targeted towards low and moderate income residents of your community. It could be, if all everything came together, it could be up to 70% tax credit in that situation. So we went from uh, 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 the law of the land being uh, a 30% tax credit and stepping down to 10% to now the law of the land at the, totally the ideal situation, if all of these things were put in place, 70% tax credit. That's a big deal. Let's talk about, well, how does this relate to congregations? Direct pay is the fancy name. And uh, of course, um, up until now, uh, this was this tax credit was graded for um, for homes, for businesses. Homes and businesses, by the way, that had to have a tax appetite. You don't pay if you if you were if you didn't know taxes, then uh, then you can't take a tax credit. So there's that. Um, but if you're a, a food shelf, if you're a church, if you're a city or a school, you don't pay taxes. So no tax credit for you. You have to pay the full fare. The Inflation Reduction Act has changed that. Uh, uh, um, now, 
um, these organizations, cities, tribal nations, nonprofits, faith communities, uh, can receive, essentially receive that tax credit uh, with the adders. So it's like, it's it will be like, and a lot of the guidance is still, we're, we're still waiting for it, but it'll be like the church paid or the faith community paid taxes and overpaid their taxes and we'll get a refund from the federal government for 30% of the cost of the array or 40% if you if you qualify for one of these adders or 50 or 60 etc that's a game changer that's a that is a humongous deal um so that's a big takeaway from uh from today's session. Buff mentioned that one of the options through MNIPL is like a, a no uh, cost up front option. And that's typically been how uh, faith communities, cities, schools, other non-taxpaying entities have paid for these arrays. Um, you're a nonprofit, you pay a, a private company, uh, excuse me, you, you enter into an agreement with a private company. That private company uh, it's, um, uh, puts on a solar array on the faith community, on the congregation for no upfront cost. That's the, the no cash upfront option, no upfront cost. And then the nonprofit enters into this power purchase agreement where you agree to purchase the power at a set rate uh, over a set period of time. So instead of paying uh, XL Energy, so we'll say that you're paying your utility 11 cents per kilowatt hour, um, you would now be paying this third party owner nine cents per kilowatt hour. So you get some savings, you get a little bit of savings, um, uh, through this option. And again, you get a solar array for no upfront cost. That private entity gets the tax credits uh, and other tax benefits. And that's probably how it's been done for, gosh, I know with cities and schools, probably 70 to 80% of, uh, of um, those entities that have solar have done it through this, this uh, third party ownership power purchase agreement method. And that still may be an option uh, moving forward, but the the entry of direct pay uh, kind of changes um, well, it makes it makes the tax credit available for these nonprofits. Um, and the savings, uh, if you own it outright, from day one are will be far more significant than through uh, a third party ownership type arrangement. This, by the way, this direct pay, it's available for solar, but it's also available for energy storage. So, so think batteries um, and also available for electric vehicles. So I'll talk a little bit more about storage and electric vehicles, uh, tax credits, uh, here in a minute. And so uh, you can tap into that as well. So yeah, let's talk about EVs. So um, so currently there's a, a tax credit on the books, or I should say before the Inflation Reduction Act, there was a, a tax credit on the books for electric vehicle purchases, $7,500 tax credit. Um, there was a cap uh, uh, on vehicle manufacturers. So if a manufacturer made more than 200,000 vehicles, then that tax credit went away. So think Tesla, I think maybe the Nissan Leaf, um, not sure about that last one, but Tesla, I know for sure, you made over 200,000 units, people that buy a Tesla, 
didn't qualify for the tax credit. Inflation Reduction Act changed that. It got rid of that cap. Uh, it did add on new income requirements and cost of the vehicle requirements. So the maximum income for a family is $300,000. If your income is above that, no tax credit for you. If you're filing single, uh, it's $150,000. If it's, uh, and there's also caps for the cost of the vehicle. So the tax credit is not applicable for cars that cost more than $55,000 or um, vans, SUVs, pickup trucks, uh, that goes up to $80,000. Also what's new with the Inflation Reduction Act is that there's an, a new tax credit for used vehicles. So uh, if you're purchasing a used EV, there's a new $4,000 tax credit. And I was thinking, you know, I mentioned that direct pay option is available for EVs for faith communities. And um, at first I was thinking, well, you, there's not a lot of faith communities with a, a large fleet, um, but there's certainly a lot of faith communities out there that have vans or small buses, um, and so you absolutely, uh, this may come into play um, now or, or at some point if you're buying a used vehicle at, at some point in the future. And I mentioned that uh, uh, storage also qualifies, battery storage. It used to be that storage was just, it just was kind of right around the corner. It was a little too expensive, but now we're seeing the cost drop and a lot of folks that are interested in storage. To take advantage of the tax credit, it used to be that the storage, the batteries had to be tied into a solar array. That's no longer the case. Now you can take advantage of the tax credit or direct pay. Uh, with standalone energy storage. So you no longer have to have it tied into a solar array. If you're looking for backup power and would like uh, would like to purchase energy storage, an energy a battery uh, to do that, you now have a tax credit um, available to help you you do so. And so, um, uh, so some of these EV tax credits are uh, also really encourage domestic content made in America for the batteries themselves, and um, and uh, I'll just note that just in the last couple of months, there's been two, maybe three major plant EV. Um, I should say, battery uh, storage plants uh, announced here in, in the U.S. a $4 billion plant in Kansas and a $4 billion plant in Ohio. Um, so we're starting to see the Inflation Reduction Act really have some, some uh, major impacts in terms of uh, job creation and uh, uh, production here in the United States, which is good. One seventy nine D. What in the world is that all about? It's a section of the tax code. Uh, and uh, this is a deduction. So it's not a tax credit. It's a deduction. Um, and uh, it was created back in 2006 as an incentive for commercial building owners to install energy efficient systems. The, the, the program's intent is to drive commercial, has historically been uh, to drive commercial building owners and designers of um, 
of buildings to reduce their energy use by rewarding the implementation of energy efficiency building components. So think HVAC, uh, really energy efficient HVAC or um, uh, really great building insulation, um, great windows, uh, that the, those sorts of things. So it was, it's been in the law of the land for on the commercial side for, for a while. The Inflation Reduction Act said, okay, not only can, um, can, can the for-profit side take advantage of this, but now we're going to make it available for nonprofits as well. And it, it's a it's a little bit of a it, it's it's not quite as cut and dry as a direct payment like a, a check from Uncle Sam to the faith community. Uh, through the this one seventy nine D tax exempt entities can allocate this deduction to a building architect or a building engineer or, or the contractor, those entities that do pay taxes, you as a faith community that's building a new church or building on a new wing or doing major renovations can, can work with that contractor or that architect or that engineer and say, hey, we're going to get this tax deduction and we can send it over to you and you can use it. But in, in exchange for that, we'd like you to reduce your price for, uh, for constructing this uh, by this amount. And so it's, it can be part of the negotiation uh, 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 with that contractor, with that engineer, with that architect. And that's brand new thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act. It's a it's a negotiation point, um, and, and the deduction is based on the square footage of the the building itself, or the reno, renovation, or the the new wing you're putting on. So that's great. You got uh, you got a direct payment of seventy percent. Well, or excuse me, we'll say a direct payment of thirty percent. For a new solar array that you're putting on on uh, the faith community, but gosh, that leaves seventy uh, percent that you're on the hook for. And oh, by the way, you don't you get the direct payment later on, you know, uh, at some point in the in the future. So you got to come up with a hundred percent of the money um, to do the project, and then and then you'll get the 30% at some point in the future. So I wanted to let you know about this financing that's available now. It's been around for, gosh, maybe a decade or so called Property Assessed Clean Energy. And, um, and this, this financing tool is... Uh, Without a doubt, it's growing in popularity uh, in Minnesota. I think there's been about 400 projects um, that have been completed, 400 plus projects that have used property assessed clean energy. Um, it's growing in popularity because there's always an energy audit component to it if it's an energy efficiency project. And these are cash flow positive projects. Um, so that means that. You get an energy audit completed. It shows if you do do new lighting and uh, more insulation, and you put it in a new air source heat pump, uh, you're gonna lower your energy bill by ten thousand dollars a year. We'll say the the assessment will always be lower than that. So you'll be you'll save ten thousand dollars. The assessment may be seven thousand dollars. It. It's 100% financing upfront uh, from the St. Paul Port Authority. No matter where you are in Minnesota, the, mon the money comes from the St. Paul Port Authority, 100% financing. And then you pay it back as an assessment on your property tax bill. And I know what you're thinking, but we don't pay property taxes. 
That's true, but you do pay assessments. So it works the same way as a street assessment or a sidewalk assessment. Twice a year, you'd get a you'd get a bill from the county uh, where you're located, and it'll say property taxes owed zero, assessment uh, uh, two thousand dollars or whatever whatever it, it is. It's at a fixed interest rate. Typically, the term is 10 years at an interest rate. Currently, it's 5%. And this is a, a popular option for nonprofits. Um, here's some examples uh, of nonprofits across the state that have been, that have utilized uh, a property assessed clean energy to do again, both energy efficiency projects and renewable projects. Um, and there's been at least, I think at least four faith-based communities that have used PACE in the last couple of years. Uh, a mosque in St. Anthony, uh, St. Christopher's in Roseville, uh, United Church of Christ in New Brighton, um, Atonement Lutheran in, in New Brighton has used it, and maybe a few others have used this tool. All right, so that's that's uh, that's really the bulk of the Inflation Reduction Act as it relates to your facilities. Um, but I also wanted to, to touch on uh, the, some of these um, changes when it comes to folks that are attending your, your, uh, who are in the congregation. So this is a slide that we at CERTS have been using for a long time. Oh gosh. Um, uh, it's, uh, touches on all those things in your home that, that you should be thinking about. We've probably used this slide for 15 years or so. And, uh, uh, attic insulation and heating and windows. The good news is that the IRA touches on all of these various things with both tax credits and rebates. So there's been a tax credit for energy efficiency, residential energy efficiency for, for a long time, but the tax credit was capped out at $500 for your lifetime. The Inflation Reduction Act changed that and uh, and said, okay, uh, now there's a 30% tax credit and it's capped at $3,200. Uh, and it's not once in an eternity, it's an annual cap, $3,200 annual cap. I know we're running a wee bit short of time and I wanna le leave time for questions. So I'm gonna, uh, jump ahead, um, I will say this is the decade of the air source heat pumps. And this is amazing. Just to use this as an example, there's a $2,000 tax credit on air source heat pumps. And I'll say that the Inflation Reduction Act uh, is really just a giant drive, pedal to the metal, a drive towards electrification. Air, for, air source heat pumps being one example of that. Air source heat pumps, where you transfer heat instead of creating it, much more energy efficient. You, you can use it for heating in winter, cooling in summer. Uh, yeah, there's a, a tax credit, 30% of the project cost up to $2,000 tax credit. I'll also note, I think this is important for, for all of these different components, the devil is really in the details. So for example, not all air source heat pumps are created equal. And it, um, it has to be a certain level of efficiency to qualify for the tax credit. And so um, like uh, just know those details when you're walking into Home Depot to, to make these purchases or know these details when you're walking into the dealership to uh, to purchase an electric vehicle um, and more. There are two 
big time uh, rebate programs that have been funded through the Inflation Reduction Act across the nation. One is called the Homes Rebate Program, Homeowner Managing Energy Savings or Homes Rebates. And the other one has the, uh, le the not quite as memorable name of the High Efficiency Electric Home Rebate Program or HERA. About $9 billion total uh, in rebates uh, across the nation. Uh, these are just being rolled out uh, or just being created. What these rebate programs will look like, uh, each state is responsible for creating its own program. And so those states, the state of Minnesota is creating what it thinks these uh, rebate programs will look like. Uh, and I'm telling you this knowing that uh, Faith-based communities are great sources of information to get the word out. So, um, so the Homes Rebate Program, it's a whole house rebate program. Um, it's where if you, um, you're thinking about doing a, a major energy efficiency renovation and you uh, your contractor uses modeling software and you model out uh, that your, your improvements will result in 20% energy savings for your home, that's a $2,000 rebate. If it's 35% or more energy savings, that, that's a $4,000 rebate for you. That's a modeled uh, savings or measured. So you, you come in, a contractor comes in and uh, tests your, um, your appliances. You know at the beginning of the pro process what your energy usage is. And then you do the energy conservation measures and you, again, measure it at the end. If you, if you have 20% 20, 20 energy savings, again, you get a $2,000 rebate. If it's 35% or more, $4,000 rebate. Here's the kicker. If, it, if you're a low or moderate income household, those rebates doubled. So again, a lot of these incentives are, uh, are wisely geared towards low and moderate income uh, folks. And Peter, I believe that low to moderate income is defined as up to 150% of Correct. median income. Yeah, let's talk about that for the, for the HERA. Uh, so these are rebates on specific uh, appliances or specific uh, things that you do in, in your, your home. Um, yeah, electric wiring, for example, or, or that, uh, that electric service panel. Uh, these are specific rebates, and, and they're, again, geared towards low and moderate income folks. Um, if you are at 80% AMI, um, uh, the area median income, 80% area median income or below, you get 100% of these rebates. If you are between 80% area median income and 150% AMI, 50%, you qualify for 50%. If your household income is above 150% AMI, you don't get these rebates, but you still can take advantage of the tax credits, 30% tax credit. And these things work together. That's, I know we're a little shorter time, but so you can get a rebate, uh, you can get a tax credit, and if your utility has any rebates or if there's any other incentives from anywhere else, like the um, city of Minneapolis green cost share program, for example, these all can work together. It's not either or, they all, you can tap into all of them. Um, which is pretty amazing. So here's just a, 
just what we were talking about, kind of a summary of, uh, of these various incentives. So I have a, a, a case study. This is the Coleman family, lovely family of five in New London, and they live in a, a 1,300 square foot, three bedroom home, and uh, their annual income is $55,000, which is um, under the uh, under 80% area median income for, for New London, which is $83,000. Uh, and so they qualify, the Coleman's qualify for 100% rebates up to a cap of $14,000. And so that's another thing I'd encourage you to do is if, if you do qualify for these, to kind of think through about what what uh, what you may be interested in doing in the years ahead. So the Coleman's, uh, in this case, they're looking uh, 2023, they, they need a new stove. They can uh, purchase an electric uh, range, 100% through the HERA rebate program, 100% the stove itself and installation uh, covered through HERA. Yeah. Peter, yeah. could I interrupt you just a minute? Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, I'd like to keep going on these details, but I want to yeah. pull back just a minute. So, because I know some people have to leave at one, and I want to just get a couple of questions that have been asked kind of covered. You bet. Um, one question that has come up a few times, and I'll, I'll offer one response and invite you to also is just what about the implementation of all this and how do you navigate oh all gosh. this? And I'll just say, you know, from M and IPL side of things, um, Peter's presentation here is the second presentation that M and IPL has had on the IRA. We had one back in November with Jeremy uh, Kalen, and we've been able to uh, fortunately have one here with Peter Lindstrom. As Peter said, the IRA is still being rolled out. The IRS is still making decisions. The Department of Energy is still making decisions, and M and IPL with its partners like CERS is watching what happens and keeping tabs on that. So you can expect, you know, in another couple of months, probably in June, we'll have another one of these uh, webinars to tell you the next round of things. Uh, right now, uh, at the individual level, MNIPL doesn't have a, a, a strong partner that we feel like, oh, this is the partner that just has the you know, can can just walk every single person through every single part of this. It does require some of work, as you can see on your part. Um, at the congregational level, we've got more robust uh, support that we can can help you with. So you want to offer any thoughts on that too? Well, that's a great point. The implement, implementation is key. You know, the uh, Congress can roll out whatever tax credits they wish and whatever incentives, but it's up to businesses, farmers, congregations, homeowners to actually do these things. If we want to reach that goal that I said uh, at the outset, the 40% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, that's not going to happen because Congress passed a law. That's going to happen because each one of us takes some action. And so the implementation is really key. And um, I will say, uh, we are talking to whoever, whenever, at uh, whatever chance we have to help spread the word about this. Um, I'll also say there is um, a lot of uh, great resources out there um, that you can see on the screen today. I'm, I'm throwing a lot of information at you, and um, uh, so there's some good one-pagers, uh, uh, some good articles. There's articles that are specifically written for faith-based communities and the IRA. Just, go just do what I did. Google Inflation Reduction Act churches <laughs> uh, or IRA nonprofits, um, and, uh, and you'll find some great resources uh, on this. Uh, I'll say energy um, Energy Star, again, is a great resource. And, and we here at the Clean Energy Resource Teams, we are tracking this very closely. And we do have a, a part of our website um, that is dedicated towards the Inflation Reduction Act that we are continually updating. 
So I encourage you to Thank check you. that out as well. Yeah. So the so the the quick answer at this stage is if you your congregation wants to get involved, you can reach out to me uh, and Brett Pence, our great greater Duluth, uh, greater Minnesota director, and Peter Lindstrom. And if you're looking for individuals uh, action, uh, we will keep coming out with resources to help you with that. But right now we're still working on that. Uh, one more question, Peter, uh, that has come up uh, in a couple of different contexts, either in the congregational or the personal level. If you've started projects in 2022, mm -hmm. will will those still qualify for these tax credits and, and rebates? Great question. Yes. Okay. It, it's Great. retroactive to, to uh, 2022. And for the IRS purposes, um, they usually, my understanding is that they look at when the project was completed or, or like when it's, um, when it's ready to be hooked up or is hooked up to the grid as kind of a key date. Uh, so if you've started a project in um, 2022 or 2021 even, started those initial conversations, but it really wasn't hooked up until later. Yeah, yeah, you're good to go. That's my understanding at least. Yep, so it's true for both individuals and commercial and congregational entities. Yep, great. Great. Well, uh, we, I, I think that covers the main questions that came up. Um, I'll let you, you know, close out your uh, presentation here, Peter. And thanks to if anybody has to leave. Thanks a lot. We'll be sending a follow up email with the links and uh, uh, appreciate your time here today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, I, I guess I'll just uh, wrap up by saying the Inflation Reduction Act ties in well with another piece of federal legislation called the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. This passed in 2021. They are now affectionately called Uncle Ira and Uncle Bill uh, because they work well together. Maybe it should be Aunt Ira and, and Uncle Bill. I don't know. I like that better, I think. But uh, Uncle Ira and Uncle Bill, and, and so the bipartisan infrastructure law. Gosh, what was it? One point two trillion dollars, I think, um, for infrastructure projects. Think highways, uh, port improvements, um, bridges, also airports. You know, all wastewater treatment, all sorts of uh, infrastructure, but. It also provided $7.5 billion to build out a, a national network of EV chargers. And 70, 73 billion uh, to upgrade our, our energy uh, transmission infrastructure. So that's why I say these two things really tie together. It's great to get an EV, right? But if you can only, if there's no place to charge it, when you go to Duluth or like I did uh, a month ago um, and both the chargers were broken, um, that, that's not super helpful. So uh, so these two things really, really tie in together. Um, so these are the key takeaways, uh, the high points, I think, um, uh, for you to consider uh, with the Inflation Reduction Act. Got that direct pay, 30% minimum, this new uh, leverage tool for uh, for new faith communities or or renovations, uh, and a lot of these tar these are um, incentives are are targeting low and moderate income residents. Uh, if you're interested in backup power or just energy storage as a whole, as part of your solar array or just as a standalone system, you can now. Take advantage of that. And then I mentioned uh, less relevant for faith communities, but a big deal in the solar world is the transferability of these solar tax credits. Oh, and this is me. That's my contact information. So yeah, please hit me up. I, 
I, uh, that really makes my day when I get an email or a phone call from a faith community that is like, hey, we're interested, but geez, not quite sure. You know, we're motivated, but how do we pay for this? Or like, who do we go with? Or what are the options? Or gal, you know, what things should we consider? Is our roof good? Or our roof is like, ten, you know, needs to be replaced in 10 years. Is that still a good place to put solar? Or my answer usually will be call buff, but uh, I'm happy to help you too. <laughs> well, thanks, Peter. This has been uh, fantastic. What a wealth of information and a great, great description of the IRA and all its nuances. So we really appreciate that. Uh, we look forward to working with you all in the, in the future and uh, appreciate everybody being on the call today and supporting uh, climate response through uh, these these kind of actions, renewable energy and energy efficiency. I really appreciate it. Thank you.